it's been a while since I took the TP9DA out, and you know, I figured, eh, I guess I can load up some 9mm and shoot it again. So, this isn't the first 9mm that I have up for, you know, a higher round count review. The uh, Sarsomaz SAR 9 is, you know, kind of ahead of the line, but haven't shot this one in a while, and uh, this one is pretty low on the round count. Uh, it's sitting just above like 1,200 rounds, so I figured getting out to the range, launching about 300 rounds through it to round it off to 1,500 would be a pretty good idea and kind of give my impressions of its progression. So, anyways, let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so that's just the... Uh, not the first mag, but maybe about the third mag. Um, one thing I have noticed with the TP9DA is it has blacked out uh, rear sights and just obviously a white dot front sight. Um, I'm pretty sure you can get, you know, different sights for this. These are the Warren Tactical sights, so blacked out rear. That's what a lot of people like for uh, speed and stuff for, uh, I guess, competition or whatever. But generally, that's like... The big popular thing is just to get a quick sight picture. You just have one uh, one uh, dot to kind of track, and it's for speed more than accuracy. So, just using it as a way of getting speed. Let me go ahead and be sloppy, be a sloppy cameraman, and kind of pull you over and let you see the target here. So, as you can see, I painted up that target and. It kind of scattered. I was uh, shooting as fast as the sight was getting back on target and you can see it kind of scattered. It was going uh, basically uh, in the middle, that line in the middle. It was basically going there first and then it was just going all over the place and I was trying to keep a pretty competent hold of the gun but you know it wasn't really working out all that much so uh, I mean, I'm going to try some headshots and see if I can do that. I like to start from the double action. I mean, you can always, you know, just start from the single action. And basically where you, like, just pull it back a tad. And this thing is really tight and locked in there. So i um, not going to be able to crank it back. So anyways, let's go ahead and see if I can get some headshots here. So that wasn't exactly all that successful. So it's a combination, to be honest, I haven't really been practicing much at all. So I am pulling the trigger and moving the gun. I'm <laughs> I'm moving the gun while I'm trying to pull the trigger. So uh, that's a fault of mine. And also my grip just sucks. Forearms are kind of worn out uh, from, you know, working with my dog and working with the leash and stuff like that. And, you know, this is my primary grabbing hand so my forearm is kind of worn out and sweaty. I've got all these interesting factors and excuses for this one so anyways I'm gonna go ahead and load up some more magazines and hopefully I can unfuck myself here and uh, actually start shooting like a competent person. So anyways I'll get back to you. Okay so I'm back got everything loaded up this has an 18 plus 1 magazine so got 19 rounds and plus an 18 round spare. I need to get a couple more magazines for this thing uh, round it off to four and then I guess gradually increase it but so far this is like one of my favorite nine millimeter uh, pistols it's basically like the p99 which I love but it just feels like it's built more solid and when it shoots the trigger even though yes the trigger is a little bit more stiff um, I feel that that is a, a sign of it being better built and that the springs are actually built a little bit better. Uh, that's just me. Uh, I, that's just something that I've kind of picked up over the years is uh, typically that means that you're going to get more longevity out of it and that's a very important quality for me. So there was one round there that actually uh, you didn't hear anything. Well, 
on these targets from Targets USA, they hang on a hook in the middle. And there's a little hole in the middle. And the uh, kind of a kind of a side note, the older uh, hook just below it where the hole was, it was kind of rounded. So I actually had uh, sometimes where rounds would actually come back and uh, hit me in the leg or whatever. <clears throat> uh, they would basically follow that that curve and just come right back. But that's changed. Uh, they basically have it now to where it's just slanted and it shoots downward. So, um, so basically that silent one uh, there near the end of the magazine was actually the round going through that hole right in the middle. So this one I just shot as fast as I could hit accurately. I'm still kind of letting the dot take over because if I'm going to take a precision shot, obviously I'm going to watch watch the uh, lineup of the blade, air on both sides, you know, all that other stuff for precision. But I'm about 7 to 10 uh, yards away, so it's not really... Uh, it's not really necessarily a precision game until I do headshots, and I was kind of overloading myself on trying to get headshots without uh, precision, so that's going to be next here. So, anyways, go ahead and see how this goes. Okay, so, basically, with the headshots, kind of slow at first, my grip really sucks on this pistol. It's just really sweaty and it doesn't feel as sure as normal. I need to really get back in the game of dry firing, but I think it was okay. Most of it was in the middle of the head. I did have one that kind of zinged the left side, so that's me moving the gun and uh, not isolating my trigger finger movement, so I need that's an important thing to worry about. That's why it's a perishable skill. We are doing something unnatural here. We are in making this finger do things that are independent. So doing that, you're going to get sympathetic movement unless you're, you've are you been doing this for a while and you can do that without moving any of these other fingers. You're going to have sympathetic movement because we like to do this, not necessarily isolating a finger. So especially trying to do it fast, you can be all over the place and have sympathetic movement. That's not necessarily uh, jerking jerking the trigger is what you're doing but what it's causing the you to do is move the rest of your hand if you're not trained and able to concentrate on isolation so anyways if you're gonna do any exercise I'd recommend getting a gripper holding with these three fingers and doing this that is something I have not done that is something I have not done so um, I need to get back into that but this is why I'm revisiting this is a great gun to test because I found that because of this harsh trigger pull um, as it's wearing in uh, or the springs are kind of getting to their uh, plateau point uh, basically it's it's pretty tough and it's a heck of a workout uh, even compared to some of my other double actions so anyways with all that said I'm gonna go ahead and load it up and I'll just go ahead and get you some b-roll of uh, shooting So that one was not that bad. If you saw, uh, I don't know if you could actually see on this silhouette target. Uh, some of them, it didn't sound like it hit, but I could see the impacts on the tire just below it. And I could see where it hit in, that, in this little hole right here in the middle. And it was going down and shooting downwards. That wasn't me. Most of my shots were actually center of mass. So, you know, not that bad. So I got to load it up again and do some more stuff. Now to top off this rain session, I guess I'll go ahead and shoot, you know, one-handed, you know, strong hand side, or strong side, but uh, I'll shoot one-handed, see how fast I can shoot accurately and try to transition between targets, even make some headshots. It's obviously just a test, so I probably suck, but yeah, yeah, what's the fun in doing it if you're 
if you're not seeing if you're going to fail or not, right? It's always a test. I suck. <laughs> I threw one low and I actually hit my uh, my paper target holder. Uh, so uh, yeah, on that on the little target, I actually hit my paper target holder, which was like, in my view, it was like this much low. So I really was trying to restrain myself. So um, not good. I I got a lot to work on. But anyways, I mean this thing's shooting good. It's not it's not too violent, but. Man, I gotta get back into uh, practicing because that's unacceptable. But, anyways, uh, so yeah, TP9DA is actually doing amazing still. Uh, I I really want to shoot this over the SAR9. Uh, personally, I like this one more than the SAR9 uh, for a few reasons. <clears throat> but, anyways, uh, yeah, that's my revisit range review on the TP9DA.